If you love New York, Whoa. then surely you love the foods that got their start in New York. Mmm, that is so good. So what are these iconic dishes that originated here? Oh my God, I need to have the potato. And how are the city's best chefs kicking them up a notch? That's a succulent breast. If you really love New York, you really don't want to miss this. Okay. I'm no longer shaving my own truffles. <laughs> Mommy, the New York starts right now. Tony and New York starts right now. New York is known for so many firsts. After all, New York was the very first capital of the country when Washington took his oath outside Federal Hall in 1789. New York is also home to the oldest running newspaper. It's hard to imagine that Alexander Hamilton, the first treasurer of the United States, founded the New York Post in 1803. And when it comes to having a good time, we New Yorkers know what we're doing. After all, we built the very first roller coaster in the world, the Cyclone, which opened in Coney Island in 1884. Now, New York is also full of icons. Uncle Sam was modeled after a butcher from Troy, while the very first female attorney sworn into office grew up on a farm in Royalton, New York. And it should be noted that Joseph Gaiety of New York City invented toilet paper. Now, when it comes to food, we have New York to thank for many of the world's most famous dishes. Lobster Newburgh was invented here, along with Eggs Benedict. Manhattan clam chowder is surely worth the mention, and did you know that the nation's very first commercial brewery was right here in New York? While we can't lay claim to the entire category of pizza, we can take credit for the coal-fired pie. But nothing could be more iconic than the New York bagel. But over in Williamsburg, there is one bagel maker that has reinvented this New York original. Don't call Scott Rosilio a baker, because once you set your eyes on his masterpieces, you too will know he's actually an artist. He says he can't draw a stick figure or even do paint by numbers accurately. Instead, the dough is his medium. But success is nothing new. He was the creator of the bacon, egg, and cheese bagel, and that phenomenon of 2013, the Craigle, along with his legendary French toast bagel. And when it comes to frosting, it comes in all sorts of flavors. Our favorites, cotton candy in blue or pink, with cannoli and Oreo cookie not far behind. Now, for another breakfast staple, we have to head back over the bridge. Having originated in 1837 as a small pastry shop in downtown Manhattan, Delmonico's went on to become America's first fine dining restaurant and ultimately the crown jewel of New York City's culinary arena. It is the birthplace of many iconic dishes, including Eggs Benedict. Yes, that dish you see on just about every brunch menu across the country got its start right here. But here at Delmonico's, they pull out all the stops, topping it with shaved truffles and caviar. Now these days, your meal might run you more than 12 cents at Delmonico's, but it will be well worth it, especially when executive chef Billy Oliva is making another signature dish, Lobster Newburgh. But how did this amazing dish make it onto the menu in the first place? Well, it turns out it was the brainchild of a fisherman named Wenberg, but it wasn't Lobster Wenberg for long. They named the dish after him, and the Delmonico brothers and, and, and him have a fight. So oh, no. they love the dish so much, they don't want to take it off the menu. Ah. So they decide to change the name, and instead of Wenberg, it went to Newberg. They cut him out. They cut him out. Because, you know what? All's fair in love and food, right? That's it. <laughs> this is about a two and a half to three pound lobster, and we sell so many of them, so we, we kind of prepare them. So these are, are lightly, have been lightly poached in butter yep, yep. already. Um, same thing with the, the claws. Then these are, you know what, I grew up with a summer house in Maine, and my grandfather had his own lobster traps. Okay, so... I'm spoiled when it comes to lobster, and let me tell you, those are good. They, they look nice. Good. Those lobsters came in this morning. So we have some hedgehog mushrooms, we have some perigold truffle, which we say, shave on the top. I don't know what that is. A little American caviar, <laughs> um, some asparagus, and some baby carrots, and that's the dish. And, that's and, and the gar like I said, the garnishes change according to the seasons. But for people at home, this is actually my breakfast. And I think my breakfast should always consist of lobster, lobster. caviar, and truffles. It's right? a good start. That's what I'm saying. All right, let's see you make it happen. Okay. I'm hungry. Your host is hungry, chef. We're going to start with a little bit of oil. Just going to add our lobster towels. Lobster going in. 
you just be careful because it's... Into oil. I haven't seen the use of butter yet. Not yet. Not yet. Soon. And In go the mushrooms. Butter. Bit. You only use one cook. Only one now. Now. Only one now. Did you hear that, Glennie? I heard that. I know what's coming. See, that's why Glennie and I are opposite. She sees butter and goes, woo, yippee. I see butter and go, oh my god, that's more gym time. <laughs> Chef adds the requisite shot of brandy, and it's party time. Then in goes the lobster stock, and the cream, and you guessed it, more butter. Next, asparagus and carrots, and he takes it to the plate. Oh, but that's not all, people. You want to shave truffle yeah, on the top? Yeah, I do. You want to do it, or you want me to do it? I want you to do it. You want me to do it? Okay. I'm no longer shaving my own truffle. <laughs> and where's my caviar? Right. Just put it right on top. I've decided in 2016, it's all about the caviar and the truffles, people. Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe I've never been here. I can't believe I've never had this. What's wrong with me? I'm gonna go in with them for a little claw too, because you know, gotta make sure all the body parts are as delicious as the other body parts of our lobster, sacrificial lobster. Right? Oh, oh, plenty. They're gonna be so happy after I take this bite. This is gonna be the last bite. <laughs> oh my god! Three, two, one. That's code for what? Rub it all over your body again, Chef. That's so great. Thank <laughs> you so much. Love it. Last for dinner. Go on, go. Come get it, people. Woo! All right, I'm backing away. Crew, how how well do I treat my crew? Coming up, Manhattan Clam Chowder gets a lobster makeover. Harlem's Chicken and Waffles takes on a French twist. Beer gets spiked with s'mores, but what type of pizza was invented in New York? We're road tripping to find out. Now another famous dish that is spread across the country like wildfire was created in Harlem at Wells Restaurant in the 1940s. Now you see, their jazz club was the busiest at 2 a.m., so they decided to serve this unlikely duo to bridge the gap between dinner and breakfast. But these days, chicken and waffles has gone to a whole new level at City Crab Shack. With a heaping bounty of fresh seafood picked up each morning from the local fish market, City Crab Shack, located at 10 East 16th Street, is actually the relocation of City Crab and Seafood Company, which reached legendary culinary status when it opened in 1993. But today, chef and restaurateur Andrew Silverman is making me his outrageous chicken and waffles. But before the fun began, I was handed the most potent cocktail I've come across from his Mexican restaurant, Campeón, across the street. What is in this? This is mango on the bottom, there's reposo, and there's... And there's a little of, bit of booze in there, too. Well, there's a lot of tequila in there. I and we have, our, we have actually our vanilla salt, you know, that's rimmed with vanilla salt. It looks like we have either strawberry or, yeah, they, they did something better. very, very special. But lots of lime. <laughs> so, so we have chicken. We have, a we have a half a chicken. Wait, I think Andrew's telling us something. We have, oh, a, okay. half a, we have a half a chicken, which is with the, oh. we cut the Ooh. skin on. We have two pieces on the breast with the keel bone in. He's in breast, huh, Glenny? And also the rib bone in. <laughs> A boneless thigh, a boneless thigh, a score, scored chicken wing, which is scored at the, it, it, at the joint, so it cooks faster, and the drumstick, of course. This has been brine, super brine. Super we have a brine. super brine, you know, which we brine for about six, seven hours in black tea, orange tea, a little bit of maple, and salt, sugar, and some speci special, other special ingredients. Other special ingredients? Yes. So now, gonna Andrew then dunked the chicken in buttermilk spiked with sriracha and then into his special dry spice mix and into the fryer. He put me to work making the waffles. All right, I've never done this before, people. So here goes nothing. I might have overbeaten it. Two, two and a half. Go ahead. Go. Right in the middle. Right, right in the middle. In the middle. Okay, in the It'll middle. spread. One middle. more. Okay. And another half. Andrew. There you this go. This is going to be the best waffle you've ever had. I'm just telling you that right now. But this is where it got crazy when he whipped up the blood orange gastrique. 
blood orange juice reduced along with maple syrup, then kicked up with orange champagne vinegar, sherry vinegar, creamed pureed sweet garlic, Dijon mustard, and minced shallots. He poured that on top of the chicken and waffles along with some fried tarragon and a variety of dried oranges, and the result is pure magic. But apparently, Andrew's a breast guy. I want you to taste that breast, please. Okay. <laughs> Tell me how succulent that is. Chicka chicka bam bam, succulent breast going into succulent breast hole. In three. Middle orange. Bossy. Mm -mm. That's a succulent breast. Lenny, you know you want it. I do. Give oh my me. God. Oh my god, that is ah. so... Oh my god, stop! Stop! Huh! Love me! No way! You can hand it my way! There's a reason you have 113 restaurants. Stop it. All right, now let's talk about beer, which can be traced all the way back to ancient Egypt. And it's thought that those who worked on the pyramids were actually buried with canisters of it. But when it comes to the United States, the very first commercial brewery was right here in New York. Way back in the early 17th century, when we were still known as New Amsterdam, the Adrian Block and Hans Christians Brewery opened in 1612 and closed in 1632. The very same year, the West India Company built a brewery in Lower Manhattan aptly called the New World Brewery. But today, if you are in search of great local craft brews, Little Town, right on East 15th Street, is where you will find all things New York, as it boasts a menu of almost 100 beers, all sourced from New York breweries. Right now, we have a Saranac S'mores Porter, which is very nice. S'mores Porter? Little hints of cinnamon, graham cracker. We have it all. Cook a sister up. I can smell it. You can definitely smell it. You can oh smell the yeah. graham cracker. Totally the cinnamon, smell the graham cracker. Sm it smells so good. Cheers. Cheers, baby. There's like <laughs> s'mores in the beer. And they have great bar food to pair perfectly with your brew. The boardwalk loaded waffle fries with bacon, scallions, and cheddar couldn't get any better. But me? I wanted me some wings. And here at Little Town, you've got a bevy of beauties to choose from. Chelsea Chipotle Barbecue, Brooklyn Batter Up, and my favorite, the Hot Buffalo. Woohoo! That's caliente. It is. Makes you want a salsa. Exactly. You know <laughs> but not everyone on the Tony on team can take the heat. We do is just bring these to Bob and tell him they're not hot at all. Let's do that as the last one. He'll like poop his little pants. All right. Oh, oh, I can't say that on TV. You can't. Can you say? Wait, wait, wait. Poop your pants? Can you say poop your pants on TV? I don't know. Absolutely. I want, you know, viewers, I want to know. <laughs> Facebook me right now. Do you think you can or cannot say, poop your pants on television? I need to hear from you. Coming up, Manhattan clam chowder goes gourmet with a lobster makeover. Plus, the New York pizza that can't be beat. We're road driven to uncover a New York original. Historians say that Manhattan clam chowder used to be called Coney Island clam chowder or Fulton Market clam chowder. Both of those names were popular in the 1890s. But these days, if you want a sophisticated riff on a New York original, all you have to do is head to Ed's Lobster Bar. If you're looking for classic New York seafood, just head to 222 Lafayette Street in the hip neighborhood known as Nolita. Yes, they have a raw bar, and yes, we do believe that Ed's lobster roll is the city's best. He also pumps out decadent dishes like lobster poutine and on Wednesdays only, lobster meatballs. But today, we came to indulge in his riff on that classic New York dish, upping its game by using lobster, shrimp, and scallops, along with lobster stock. So while that's sauteing, we're gonna go ahead and add our mussels, our clams, our red pepper puree, and a little squeeze of lemon. We're going to go ahead and cover that up okay. until it's steamed open and ready. He then adds the sautéed seafood into the broth, covers it, and lets the lobster finish cooking. Eduardo, now do it yourself, my friend. This yeah. smells so good, people. I'm currently getting a clam facial now. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to place 
all the muscles in the bottom kind of build the height up in there. Sure. The clams come in next. Yum. And we want to show that the beautiful scallops. Oh, those scallops. I'm going to wreck those. Shrimp. Look at that lobster claw. We're going to pour the oh. lobster tail. We're going to pour that broth right over the Yum. top. Yum. Oh. And then. Oh, the claw, people, the claw. We have decided in 2016 I'm no longer deshelling my own lobster. So Ed, will you do the? That's the, not a problem. Will you do do yeah. the do the do the do the whatever it is? Pleasure. There we go. Whoa! He didn't even need a cracker. Ah, uh, you don't need a cracker to get. You don't need a cracker. He's like, yeah, crackers are for babies. So oh. gonna call, you're gonna call. You're gonna. Why don't you dip that in there and get a good bite? Oh. Are you dip that in there? and get a good bite. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> dirty. Totally dirty. Get in Not there. Me. Yeah, you are. You're filthy, Ed. Three, two, one. That is so good. So there's also oh, this thing right here. It's the lobster tail. I know. Do I need to deshell that for you as well? Yes, you do. I need you to enjoy deshelling it for me. Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I like to get my fingers dirty. Yes. Yes, yes! <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Why have been having clam chowder? When you give it Ed's New York fish stew. Just look at it, people, come on. Look at it. While we can't lay claim to the entire category of pizza, this style is totally New York. We're road tripping with Chef Ed McFarland to check it out. Okay, we got the bagel, the lobster Newberg, the beer, the Benedict, and the spectacular take on the chowder, but we're not done with Ed McFarlane. Oh no, because when a chef is as good as this guy, it's road trip time to get the scoop on where Ed heads when he wants his favorite New York original. What's going on? Long time, is it? It's always good to see you. All right, so we're doing New York originals. Where are you taking me today? You know what, Tony? I'm taking you to New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven? Cold Oven Pizza originated in New York City. It did? But I'm taking you to Sally's of Pizza in New Haven. It's gonna blow my mind? It's gonna blow your mind. It is the best cold oven pizza you're gonna have. All right, let's do it. Let's go. In 300 feet, turn right to Crosby Street. Opened in 1938 by Salvatore Consiglio, Sally's is renowned for thin crust pizza, still baked today in the same coal-fired oven that has been in use for over 80 years. Continuously operating since 1938, Sally's is one of the oldest family-run pizzerias in the Northeast. For many years, Sal and Flo were the sole proprietors. Today, Sal's sons, Rob and Rick, still maintain the family tradition. And let me tell you, on a Friday night, it was jamming. We actually had to wait for our pie. The center of that fire burns 26 to 2800 degrees. We keep pulling up pizzas in our mind. Sam, you grew up across the street? Yeah. No way. Yeah, I've been working here since I was a little kid. I no way. In, uh, when I was a kid. Yeah, what, five years ago you started working here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I literally uh, been, um, been here 50 years. Wow. Been working here. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. A lot of people said not only is the pizza great, but the people make it also. Yeah, and the customers. We have all our regular customers. Yes. It's like a family atmosphere here. See, I'm still a lot of talking. I'm making pizza. <laughs> Girlfriend's hungry. I come all the way from New York City on a Friday night. Then there was a classic grated cheese and tomato with extra garlic. The mozzarella and our second combo. Summer special with a little fresh tomato, zucchini and onion. And uh, Brad, our potato special. Potato? Yes. There's potato on my pizza. I yes. heard that Bobby stole the recipe from Rome, from the Romans. Yes. <laughs> he carried it back all the way from Italy. Further back on me. Yeah, you know, I know who we're dealing with now. I like this Bobby guy. That is definitely the biggest Paula I have ever seen. Is it's, your Paula that big? I hope so. <laughs> it's, called, it's called a peel. In Italian, it's called a Paula. You're in. That old blue eyes popped in this place once or twice. A uh, long time ago, my uncle Tony, who died uh, maybe four or five years back, was uh, his valet, and they remained friends for life. They met, they met his children. My uncle was playing hooky, 
mm -hmm. went to the railroad station, had whatever he had, $2, $3. How far could I go on a round trip ticket? And he ended up in Hoboken, hanging around the waterfront, and he met this kid named Frank. And uh, there you go. It was a lifetime relationship. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's the a plan. Original. That's the original. And that's from mozzarella pie. Okay. If she took a bite. I ate a whole piece. It's not You're a margarita, an animal. because a margarita's fresh mozzarella. That's, I know. So what is so it's this? It's a cheese. It's cheese pizza. Here. Oh my God! Look at this. I like the slices, the slicing technique too. It's awesome. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. That's our garden special. Thank you. Uh, white, fresh tomato, zucchini, onion, with the light garlic sauce. And this is the potato that I stole from the Romans. If you want, I can grab you a plate because that's kind of heavy. Yeah. Might... Right, we got it. We know. We're professionals, Bob. Three, two, one. Oh my God. I need to have the potato. You are not getting pizza like this anywhere else. Why am I not? Pie. Bobby, give it up. Five, give me five. That's it, Bobby. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. My favorite. Oh, my Sally's, a pizza, New Haven, Connecticut people. Do it. Oh, yeah. Do it. Cheers. Mm. For all the info on the show, just hook up with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And while you're there, let us know where you want us to take the show. We take your tips and your safety very seriously. So always remember to buckle up and assign a designated driver as you traverse the tri-state. And we'll see you next time on Tony On. The sun is shining.